I still remember the first day where I started my e-commerce business. I have to research the product, I have to set up a Shopify store, I have to edit the videos, and I had to run the ads. And that was just a start. Because after setting all that up, I started getting comments, chats about how much the product is, and people inquiring about the product. And soon, I found that I didn't have any time at all because I have to do every single thing in my business. Now, does that sound like you? If it is, then we're talking about delegation today. So stick around so we can talk about how you can get out of that using these few tips. Number one thing you need to do is to set up systems or in short, just document stuff. So for example, if someone asks how much the product is, you should have prepared a script for it. And if you've been running ads for a while, you have a few common questions that you get in your store. I want you to compile all of that and put them inside a document and then write up some answers that someone else can copy paste and of course modify it based on the needs of a specific customer. Now that might sound obvious but that's a very first version of your documentation for customer service. It should contain a script how you answer questions such as what happens if the product fails? Do I get a refund? How long is the refund process? Where's the product made of? How is this product different from your competitors? And questions like that. Now, once you have all of those questions lined up, just put them together in a single document and now you're ready to delegate. So if you're delegating a customer service work, just give them that the time you hire them and see how well they can use it in their job. Now, of course, that's just one of the processes that you can set up, but technically you will have some sort of onboarding process, hiring process, but you have to start with some Thing. So you start with your script, put it together, and give it to them. Now, what about other more creative work like Photoshop or video editing? I found that it's easier to delegate complex tasks like that by recording your screen using Loom. Or you can also use a documentation tool like ScribeHow. This is not sponsored by ScribeHow, but I actually like their product because it makes it easy for you to just do the job and click on your screen and it turns it into a beautiful PDF that you can edit and you can change the screenshot and it gives you a documentation that you can start with. That will leave you with a document that you can easily give to someone else so that they can do your job. And that's step one, preparing your documents and streamlining your process. Of course, there's more details in this, like if you're editing videos, you need to craft file organizations so that when you give them all the files, they know where the images are, the music are, the graphics are, GIFs if you use it in your video editing. So you give them all the tools and all the resources that they need so that they can do their job. Once all those documents is set up, now it's time for you to look for someone to hire. It's common for starting e-commerce businesses to hire freelancers, uh, maybe from Upwork or maybe from online jobs at PH. But you'd be surprised with the amount of quality applicant that you will get by posting a job on LinkedIn and on Facebook groups. So just create a job post telling them what the job is, what the requirements are, and what your expectation is, and of course, how much you're gonna pay them. Now, before you go ahead and make your job post, I want you to do one simple thing first, and that is to create a test project for the job. If the job is something like video editing, it's a bit easier because you can just give them a few footages and then tell them how you want it edited. Just make sure it's not too hard though. Now for chat support, you can give them a few questions and have them answered in a form. Just so you'll know how they will answer certain questions and lets you know how good their written English is. Ideally, your test project should be as close as possible with the actual job that they will perform. Don't overcomplicate this. Just put some instructions on a Google Doc and when you get applicants, just send them the document. It should contain instructions where they can submit their test project results. Now, you have created a document to train them how to do the job, you have created a hiring post with a test project, now it's time to actually hire them. Well, interview them. In our company, we actually hire based on core values, but if you're just starting out, it's fine if you just hire based on the skills and you might want to improve that later. If you want to learn more how to do this hiring process from the book titled Traction by Gino Wickman. In that book, Gino explains the idea of having the right people in the right seats. But if you're starting out and this is your first time hiring somebody, at this stage you don't want to overcomplicate it. Just do it because you will start to learn how to hire once you start doing it repeatedly. And your work doesn't stop there. Once you've hired someone, now it's your job to give them feedback and tell them if they're doing well or if they're doing not so well. And if they're not doing well, you should teach them. Teach them how to do their job and set up some KPIs like if it's a chat support, like how quick should they respond when someone asks a question. Or if it's a video, like how quick should the turnaround be? 
Without setting these expectations, it's easy to get frustrated, especially if they're not delivering their work the way you want them to. So your job changes from actually doing the work into helping them do the work. And if you have the right person, it should free up your time so that you can focus on bigger problems like getting more sales. That's all and thank you for watching. Bye-bye.